Just like our previous example, we're going to begin with our base case. So we have our proof. We first need to prove the base case. The base case here is going to be that n is equal to 1 because this is the positive integers. z plus is the positive integers. So this is n is equal to 1. This means that we need to check that 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 is divisible by 3. That's 3, which is divisible by 3, of course, which is divisible by 3. After this, we need to state our inductive assumption. Inductive assumption or inductive step or inductive hypothesis. Which is, we assume the result holds for, we'll just to showcase we can use different letters, we're going to write this as n. That is that p of n is true, which is that n cubed plus 2n is divisible by 3. We'll come back to how to express that mathematically later, but for now we'll just write it in English. And we want to show... Want to show... P of n plus 1 is true, which in this case is that n plus 1 quantity cubed plus 2 times n plus 1 is divisible by 3. That is whatever we wrote above, but with one more in all the places that n appears, is divisible by 3. And now what our goal is to do something here to try to show that that is true. Just like the last case, we're going to start by writing down that expression for p of n plus 1 and then trying to use whatever information we can to rearrange it and write it in different ways and so on until eventually we can use our inductive hypothesis. And then we'll hopefully show that it's divisible by 3 from there. So... We're going to consider that expression, so consider n plus 1 quantity cubed plus 2 times n plus 1. This is going to be a bit of a big expression, so we're actually going to write down the next line and give ourselves plenty of space. To cube that, you could cube this out. You maybe have seen the binomial theorem before, which allows us to do this in a much faster way n plus 1 quantity cubed is equal to n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1. That's n plus 1 cubed. Plus, I'm going to distribute the 2 in the next term. We have 2n plus 2. And now for our next step, we know one fact, which is that n cubed plus 2n is divisible by 3. And if we notice, we have n cubed plus 2n appearing in this expression. So we're going to want to use our inductive hypothesis there. So by inductive hypothesis, or inductive assumption, by inductive hypothesis, something to indicate that you use the stuff I wrote in blue, hypothesis, you can say a number, number is divisible by 3 by writing that it as a number times 3. There exists a k such that, sorry, there exists a k in the integers such that n cubed plus 2n is equal to 3 times k. Just like we saw even numbers before for being divisible by a number that's not just 2, it's the exact same thing. It's 3 times that number. So, we keep going with what we had above and we get that n plus 1 cubed plus 2 times n plus 1 is equal to, I'm going to replace the stuff I highlighted in that mint and green color with 3k. So we have 3k plus we're left with a 3n squared plus a 3n. Then we have a plus 1 and a plus 2 that can combine to give me a plus 3. And now, hopefully we can see that everything there is multiplied by 3, so we factor a 3 out. Which is as 3, and I'm going to write it in different order. n squared plus n plus k plus 3. 
And again, we might want to comment that that term is in the integers. So since that horrible expression, n squared plus n plus k plus 3 is in the integers, n plus 1 cubed plus 2 times n plus 1, the thing we started with, is divisible by 3. Therefore, using our inductive hypothesis, just like we did before, we've shown that p of n plus 1 is true. Therefore, the original statement must be true for every value of n by mathematical induction. So, the result follows by mathematical induction. Let's even make, write it out a little more verbosely by the principle of mathematical induction principle of mathematical induction. And just like our previous problem, this involves doing some algebra and applying definitions and using our inductive hypothesis. That is typically the flow of such problems that we'll analyze in this class, at least. There's obviously more complicated problems, but most of these problems boil down to the similar methodology.